Keto and crime, keto and crime. We uncover the crime on keto and crime. Keto and crime, keto and crime. Now is the time for keto and crime. Hey everyone, Tracy here from Keto and Crime. Thank you so much to every single one of my patrons and channel members. You make this possible. And uh, you're one of the reasons I do this. And I thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart. And if I haven't said it before, thank you. I'll sing it. Thank you. Thank you for hanging in there with me and letting me geek out, not making fun of me like a lot of other people do because I like weird stuff about crime and dark history. Re, re. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Keto and Crime. Today, we've got a very special video. I am joined by two of my favorite people in the world, Carrie Smith and Mike Harlow. I know Mike. Actually, uh, you've probably seen us together before, but uh, this is the first time on my channel so that we've all been together. And we were going to talk to you today about our favorite obscure horror films. Now, obscure is in quotes. They may be obscure to us, but not necessarily obscure in the mainstream, but we're going to talk about them. And uh, first, like everybody to introduce themselves, Carrie, tell my subscribers who you are and where they can find you. Thank you, Tracy. Uh, my name is Carrie Smith. I have a, a channel. I do a podcast called Deprogrammed, which is about, well, a lot of it is about pulling apart my old belief system, social justice ideology through interviews and conversations, and then on Wednesday nights, uh, I, I co-host a show with my friend, Mystery Chris, and that's about pop culture. That's where we do frivolity. But I'm very excited to be here because true crime and horror are two of my guilty pleasures. And so this, is, this show for me is 100% frivolity and that's fun. It's like a break. I love it. <laughs> it, it it's definitely a break for me too. I, I, I spend so much time in crime that just something that's make-believe <laughs> and yeah, yeah, that, and fun is a lot better. But uh, Mike, I know my subscribers probably know who you are, but uh, go ahead and tell them about yourself. Hey, uh, my name is Mike. Uh, Carrie and I are both uh, former liberals, former Democrats, uh, who kind of left that side of things. Um, I am so ridiculously obsessed with horror movies. It's horrible. Like if I could just do nothing but watch horror movies and talk about horror movies, mm -hmm. that would be my dream. By the way, you guys, I'm not at all any sort of, like, gamer, but I've gotten so obsessed with playing this Friday the 13th game, <laughs> I've done nothing else in the last week. I don't know if you've ever played it or do the games or whatever, but... What kind of game is it? What system? Uh, they have it on all of them, I think, like Nintendo, oh. PlayStation, all that, but it's so good. I've never played one of those, like, actual games before, too, where, you like, you talk to the people in the headset. Oh, I have. Those are fun. I, used to, I, have, I have an old Xbox 360, so uh, I haven't done it in a while. I usually kind of, I'll binge it like I do certain types of content. So I'll binge, I'll play game a game for maybe two months, and then I won't play again for about a year. <laughs> and then I'll come back to it. I know. But yeah, th those are fun. They, they got me in this gaming group with Friday the 13th of these people from Italy, and like, some of them only speak regular Italian and some of them only speak Napoletan. And I'm the only person who speaks both. So I have to translate and be the go-between between, between crazy and crazier. <laughs> it is loud in there. <laughs> she, um, my wife uh, plays um, Warframe and State of Survival with groups. And uh, she's actually done competitions for State of Survival, but she's in a team with um, Russians uh turks and greeks and evidently there's some great divide between turks and greeks they don't like each other and they get oh, into yes. fights all the time and she has to play referee i hear her in there screaming <laughs> adam to just play the game play the game i didn't realize there was a big divide there <laughs> but <laughs> that's awesome there's always a divide between all the european <laughs> people <laughs> All right, let's get started. Uh, I'll post both Carrie and Mike's information down below so you can go find them and check out their uh, their channels and their social media. But uh, let's get started with our top 
obscure horror films. Um, I think what we'll do is just do a countdown, start with number 10, and then we'll, you know, Carrie will go, Michael go, I'll go, and then we'll just keep going kind of like a round robin, if that's okay with everyone. Mm-hmm. All right. Good. All right. Well, Carrie, take it away. Your number 10 okay. favorite obscure horror movie. Well, mine are not in any particular order. So I'll just do the first one on my list. Yeah, same. Um, I was like, damn, now I need to think of the order. Yeah, I can't oh, do I'm that. Sorry. That's too hard. Well, just go in any order you like. Yeah. Go yeah. in any order you like. Uh, and, all of, and not all of mine are obscure, but that's, you said that's okay if some are not. Yeah. Okay. Uh, obscure is relative. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So uh, one of the first one on my list was Audition by Takashi Miike. It's a Japanese horror film. Um, I believe it was around 1999. Are you guys familiar with it? I've, I've never seen I've it. I've heard, heard it. it's like very infamous, right? Mm. I at the time, yes, like in in the early 2000s, probably anybody that liked foreign horror. And oh gosh, it's so dark. So how can I explain what I like? It's just it's the depths of depravity in the human soul. And, and, and it takes the form of this beautiful, sweet seeming woman where you, you just couldn't imagine her doing these things. It, it starts off with, I won't spoil it. It just starts off with a guy, a widower who wants to find love again. And he works, happens to work in entertainment. And his, his friend says, why don't you hold a fake audition for a, a TV show, a, a competition show, and you'll really be auditioning for a wife. And so he meets this girl who comes to the audition, who's just lovely and beautiful and things go to a place you could never imagine. It's so disturbing. It's one of those disturbing kind of films where you're sort of, and I think uh, maybe I'm wrong, but I think the some of the Asian horror films, like the Korean films and the Japanese films mm -hmm. go to a place that American horror films don't go. Yeah. Um, I mean, we do gore and stuff, but they do it's like psychological horror with the gore of, of it's not like it's not like the monster is leatherface in this kind of film it's a, a person that you would never expect it's just this horrific like what what is happening okay that's no, the best no. i can describe it japanese <laughs> horror is i still haven't gotten over the ring the original i mean mm. ringu the japanese version yes that i still have nightmares about that Okay, Tracy, then you got to see Audition. I will. Just I'll be ready, ready to be. I've never seen it. Just be ready well, to be I've heard so much out. about it. <laughs> they do not fuck around. No. No. <laughs> uh, Mike, what's yours? What's your first one? Okay, so mine, I like horror movies so much because it's in a different way than what Carrie said. It's not really in like a frivolity way. For me, I view them as being aspirational. Like Final Girls... <laughs> in horror movies are just everything I want to be in life. Because um, I feel like horror movies are basically the meaning of life. Fighting to live another day and defeat the monster, no matter what that is. So I had to pick one that has just like an epic, iconic final girl. And that movie is You're Next. Have you guys seen that? Yes. No. Yes. Oh, no, oh it's good. <laughs> It is so good. After Sydney Prescott, of course, Aaron from this is my favorite final girl ever. So it's a little home alone-y, Agatha Christie kind of thing where you got the rich family and they have the dinner party and the whole family gathers and then intruders come, dot, dot, dot. It is so good. But it, so it takes that sort of like simple premise and flips it around 10 different ways. And it is so good. Oh my God. God, she just makes me want to like stand up and cheer. And there's something that happens with a blender that's amazing. And oh, it's so good. <laughs> so you like the person, you like the protagonist who fights back and yes. wins. Okay. Yes, that is what I'm all about. And I and I love to what I love, I think, so much about good final girls in movies like that is they're all kind of people who would have been discounted or aren't. I mean, it's a little bit different in this movie, but typically, like somebody like Sydney Prescott, they're people who aren't like they're not superheroes. They're not. They're just average people who have to find their inner strength. So that's what I love about it. I'm gonna take us off track, but that's one thing that made me so mad about one of the things that made me so mad about the latest 
Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the one on Netflix, mm. is because they brought back Sally Hardesty for absolutely no reason. The disrespect. And I know. They should have just left her alone. She was not looking for Leatherface. She did not have a vendetta. That just wasn't her. She was just glad to be alive. Mm-hmm. So I actually, I actually yeah. saw this one. I haven't really kept up with horror in recent years, um, although I have been for a large portion of my life a huge horror fan. But for some reason, the past few years, I haven't been watching as much of it. I did see that though, and I actually really liked it. I You're loved the it. one person who liked it. <laughs> I loved it because part of it was there are so many of those little Texas towns, and I live in one of those little Texas towns, and there are so many hipsters, woke hipsters moving here. And it was just very cathartic to watch the woke hipsters move into this little town, completely disregard the locals, treat them all as if they're backwards and bigoted and come in with their moral superiority and then be one by one taken out. <laughs> so, the, the van or the bus scene was my favorite scene in the whole movie. <laughs> See, I felt like the movie was kind of on their side. And the people and those two main actresses, they just have this like, they have like social justice face, uh, like facha yeah. bruta. The movie may have been on their side, but they all died in the end, didn't they? <laughs> well, yeah. well the, the one girl that survived the <laughs> school shooting, supposedly, I think in the end, she had a great respect for guns in the end. Yes, and she knew yes. She ended up respecting the local that they had previously mocked for right. being a gun owner. Mm -hmm. I agree, Tracy. <laughs> she used a gun to defend herself quite proficiently <laughs> in, the, in the end so i hate it though i hate it first of all the fact that they recast sally there's only one yeah. sally mm -hmm. and she passed away unfortunately but they yeah. recast her and then they literally threw her in the garbage they threw yeah. her corpse in the garbage yep mm -hmm. can i can i tell you guys something and next time you come visit me mike uh i will take you there and trace if you ever come visit i'll take you there I live less than 30 minutes from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre house, the original <gasps> one. And <laughs> it's right near my, one of my favorite coffee shop, morning coffee shops. What? Yes. And it, and I I've went there. i to see you how many times <laughs> and this is the first you're telling me of this. Yeah, but this is the new place and you've, you haven't really stayed with me here. You well, you've been there. here for the wedding. That's true. Uh, there's oh. a big old fence around the perimeter and floodlights so I assume people try and break in and stuff. Yeah. Anyway, just an aside. <laughs> I would love to. Go. Tracy, I, when I was in LA, I went to the Nightmare on Elm Street house. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> we almost went to the Halloween house too, the original Myers house, but it was a little bit far and it was late. So next trip. I, I heard that one of the famous horror houses is now a, dent a dentist like a dentist dental office oh my god uh, one of the original horror houses in la I, i've got to look what, which one it was but one of them's now a dental office wow. which says all kinds of things about that dentist but yeah <laughs> you know what you know what house i would actually love to go to i don't know if you've seen this it's horrible but uh halloween five they they have the myers house in it that for some reason they made this like castle mm -hmm. so i think it was in utah or something i want to go to the halloween five house um there's i don't think there's really any famous horror houses here in tennessee i'll have to look that up i don't think there is <laughs> We're my not whole real city famous is horror. i'm in new york my whole city is a horror house <laughs> <laughs> well i'm going to take us down a doofy road with my first uh obscure horror movie and it's 1972's night of the lepus it is about killer rabbits and it is stars Janet Lee, believe it or not. And the only reason she did the movie is because it was filmed way out in you know desert California, and she could walk to the set from her house and needed a new car. So she, that's the only reason she did the movie. It's <laughs> camp awful, but it is. It starts out with these ranchers being overrun by rabbits, and they call in scientists to help them, and they don't want to damage the ecological system by poisoning the rabbits, so they decide that messing with their DNA is better. <laughs> so they capture about 20 of the rabbits, uh, mess with their hormones, uh, 
And of course, they, they're keeping them in locked up so they can watch them. But then their little girl, uh, Janet Lee's one of the scientists, falls in love with one of the rabbits, of course, and breaks it out of the lab. It gets away from her. And then it all of a sudden, there's rabbits growing to the size of wolves. And instead of being herbivores, they're now carnivores. So they're killing cattle, they're killing horses, they're killing humans. And that's all I'm going to say. What? I, <laughs> I I know I've heard of this I before, haven't. but uh, I've never watched it. Not that I recall. So I can't, but this is right at my alley, especially yeah, since it's, it's so old. It's, it's so bad. It's good. I mean, it has. A, if it had been done right, it would have been a, a a very good horror movie. But it's campy. But that's one of my favorites. I've movies. never even heard of this one. Um, you can actually, I think, see it free on YouTube. It. I mean, oh, it's that old. Awesome. So, yeah. you know what it made me think of? I, it's probably totally unrelated. But have you guys heard of that movie? I think it was called Roar, with the lions. Mm -mm. It was Melanie Griffith. It was Tippi Hedren and her daughter Melanie Griffith. And she put her entire fortune into funding this movie with all these real lions. And basically the behind the scenes was its own horror movie. Everybody almost died. They got their skulls ripped open. They got limbs ripped off. And it's all in the movie. And it's basically like the, the sickest movie that's ever been made. Wow. Behind the I scenes. I've not heard of that. I have checked Me that either. out. I love animal horror. Anything with like killer animals i love it see i hate that because i'm an animal lover i am too i just i think you know in lots of ways they 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 always kill people that to me are, are taking advantage of them in my opinion so that that's the reason i kind of i kind of mm -hmm. like them mm -hmm. i can i can do if the animals are the killers i just don't want to see them get hurt oh no 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 i uh, the uh, if a movie like it took me like five years to watch john wick because the part with the beagle puppy oh yeah I just oh, I I, you know I told my wife we're gonna watch it but you're gonna fast forward through that part I do not need to see a puppy get killed and so we did and then I liked the rest of the movie <laughs> and then he adopts this kick-ass pit bull because I have a pit bull and you know Aww. he's awesome <laughs> so, I love pit bulls <laughs> he's he's standing right here looking at me Aww. yeah well, so my second one uh again in no particular order is another asian horror it's old boy the korean film by park chan wook have you guys seen old boy the original <laughs> not the u.s remake um okay this is another if you can only watch two asian horror films i would watch audition and old boy old boy is a tale of revenge and again, absolute depravity. And it starts with a man who is kidnapped off the street and imprisoned in a room for 15 years. And he doesn't know why, and he doesn't know who's keeping him there. And then he gets out. And I'm, I'm not saying anything else. <laughs> wow. And it's just, but it does have one of the most amazing scenes. It's a movie of revenge too. And you find out why he was kept and it's this crazy convoluted story and there's twists and there's things you don't see coming at all which are also kind of gross and it's just but there's this amazing scene in a hallway with a hammer and it's all shot from what i remember it's one continuous scene they had to get the choreography exactly right where he's fending off maybe 15 attackers and all he has is a hammer and it's just like a ballet <laughs> i'll check that out that's yeah. awesome I've never, I've never heard of that one either. Me either. Old boy. I feel like the worst horror fan. Um, I need well, to. Old, old boy was around the same time as audition. I think it was a few years. It came a few years later, um, and it was, it was uh, remade. There's a U.S. version, and I forget. It might have been Quentin Tarantino who did it. I can't remember who did it. I didn't watch it because I was like, no, I don't want to see that. I know that you're going to ruin it. <laughs> <laughs> I prejudged it. I prejudged it. But uh, but yeah, the original is really freaking good. So I need to bone up on my Japanese horror or Asian horror. Right? Yeah, this one's I Korean. I haven't watched that much of it. You know what was the one remake that was really, really good because it was totally different? Did you see the... It wasn't even really a remake, just like a retelling of uh, Suspiria. No, I don't know. No, I haven't is. seen that. 
I'm a terrible horror that fan. on the list. I thought it wasn't uh, obscure enough, but yeah, no Suspiria. Okay, screw that. I'm going to make those double feature for my next one. The original Suspiria and the new Suspiria, because they're kind of like different sides of the same coin. So do you guys know like the Jalo category of films? No. Yeah. Like uh, Dario Argento, he's the one who directed the original Suspiria. It was from Oh, 70. yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, this girl travels to Berlin for a dance school, and it's really a coven of witches. But the original one was kind of more metaphorical, and everything basically looks like my background. Everything is very bright and very red. And then they did this sort of retelling of it a couple years ago that's sort of like this epic where that's totally different. Everything is very muted and understated, and Tilda Swinton plays like 17 different roles, and oh my god, we love her. Um, <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. They're, they complement each other so perfectly. I don't think that's really ever been done before with any sort of remake that you could watch them just back to back yeah that they're both good well and that they're both like yin and yang sort of you know oh, i'll definitely check those out i've not i've honestly not heard of those i'll check them out it sucks because i was so excited that uh dario argento had a new a movie coming out He's kind of lost it i don't know his recent movies aren't so great i watched it it was this italian movie occhiali neri not good it's 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 like you mentioned quentin tarantino and i i love him so much that i hate um he's sort of ending his career after his next movie because he says directors get worse i think that might be who he's talking about when he says that because <laughs> uh. i don't think he's made a good movie since maybe like the 80s well, but it's I, I so kinda, good I, there's this scene, Carrie, that you would love in the new Suspiria where, because it takes place at this dance school, but they're really witches. So it's this sort of like dance, uh, but the people are basically human voodoo dolls. So you have the upstairs where the girl is doing ballet and then it pans downstairs and every move she does is inflicting that on the girl in the basement. Like she'll, you know, move her over and oh, her bones wow. are breaking everywhere. Oh, it's so good. Oh, wow. Cool. I'm looking it up right now. Yeah. Cool. And now I will be putting like movie posters and pit, still picks in for everyone's movies too. Ooh, awesome. That way I can learn about them. Okay. And you know, the Dario Argento film I think I've seen is Deep Red, 1975. Mm. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which I recall being very good. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to watch that one. Thank mm -hmm. you. He, the director of the new one, uh, Luca Guadalini, I wish he would do more horror movies because it was really good he also directed that movie call me by your name haven't seen it mm -hmm. oh, so good cool. all right tracy oh my next one is um 1976 uh alice sweet alice originally not called the C communion uh, that was gonna Shield. be on my list Brooke Shields, uh, the original, I, to me, it, it reminds me a little bit of Scream in a way in that they throw red herring after red herring at you, and then the ending comes at, at you just like that, you, somebody you would never have suspected. Anyway, it's just killer girl, creepy doll mask, raincoat knife, what more do you need? Mm -hmm. And isn't, creepy Catholic church, too. Isn't Donald Sutherland in that? Or my. No, that's um. Oh, what's that called? Oh God, what's what his name? that called? The girl with the red coat. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, uh, what's uh, it uh yeah. Look now. No, no, it. it I'm it's confusing in, the it's, two. It's in Europe. It's yeah the the killer midget. Can I even say yeah. midget? The killer little person. <laughs> <laughs> the killer little person. Yeah uh okay crazy. i've seen both of these don't movies look now i think and that's it don't look now, now. and they're both yeah. very good and it's been a while so i'm gonna rewatch. how alice, great. sweet alice fe just feels like a snuff film like you're mm -hmm. watching it and it feels like you're seeing something that you're not supposed to be seeing yeah does that make sense it, 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 it feels does. like real 
It does. A couple of mine are like that. They're like, they could be slice of life films, but then so, they take a really dark turn. And that's kind of how I, that was just the, from start to finish, it was just creepy. It was just creepy. And, uh, it, and it also makes me feel really bad for Brooke Shields because between that and Blue Lagoon, her mother had her doing some very risque stuff that probably messed mm -hmm. up her head. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Don't be a stage parent, no. 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 <laughs> no. Um, okay. Gosh, you guys, I'm right. I'm taking notes because I'm like, yeah. <laughs> So far, I think that's we, the first whenever one Whenever we gonna... see each other, we're always, like, doing so much shit. We need to just hang out and have, like, and a watch movies. Yeah. Movies. yeah. <laughs> For sure. Uh, okay. Next on my list, no particular order, The Dawn of the Dead remake by Zack Snyder. I think it's a perfect zombie movie. Zombie movies are probably, if I did have to rank my favorite kind of horror movie, I don't know. It's a close tie between zombie films and psychological thrillers, but I love, I love zombie movies. I, I think if they're, if they're well done, because there's something about them where it's sort of the, the horror, the horror in a zombie film is um, that it's a, there's this moment where there's a person that, you know, maybe your brother or your husband, a family member, and you don't know, you don't know them anymore. But when you first see them, you think you do. There's always that scene in a zombie movie where people are first learning about what's happening in the zombie apocalypse. And they see someone they think they're known. They're like, what's wrong? Like, why are you acting that way? And the, then the person's trying to kill them and eat them. And, and that's just terrific because they still outwardly look like a loved one. And so I think the, uh, the Dawn of the Dead, I like the original Romero one. It's in a mall. But other than that, the two films are very different. It's not the same script. They, they kept it in a mall, but other than that, everything is different. And um, I think it's the perfect zombie story because the horror is there, the way that it unfolds. The scariest part of a zombie movie, in my opinion, is always when people are learning that there are zombies, that there's something has gone wrong. And the way he unfolds the beginning is terrifying. Um, and then plus it's a very great look at how uh, the survivors become horrific to one another which is also another great part of zombie stories is how humans who are left surviving can become very monstrous. So, I, I, yeah. I agree with you. I think it's just like Walking Dead. You know, yeah. it's uh, in the beginning, it's all about the zombies. But in the end, you know, who becomes the most dangerous? The other humans. Yes, absolutely. Do you know I've never seen that? It's been on my to-watch list for like 20 years and I've never seen it. It's great. And and it also has uh, Sarah Pauly in it. I, I love, love her. Sarah Pauly. Mm -hmm. Very obscure um, Canadian actress, but I really like her. She's amazing. She was in Spawn. She was in a, some really good stuff. Mm -hmm. I need to watch that. I, uh, I'm not usually into zombie movies because we're living in the middle of one right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. What should um what should I go with for my next one? Okay, I'm gonna hmm. I'm torn. Okay. <laughs> uh I'm gonna go with a psychological horror, old school, the nanny from 1965 with Betty Davis. Has anyone ever seen that? Oh, yeah. yes. This creeped me out so much as a kid. And I feel like there are a lot of kind of themes and tropes in it that they that this movie sort of created that get used to this day in a lot of stuff. So there's this little kid and he's sent to the mental institution because his little sister died. And then he gets <laughs> taken home from the mental institution and he has a new nanny. And his new nanny is Betty Davis, which... <laughs> dream comes she was frightening life. anyway <laughs> yeah. he doesn't even appreciate it i'm mm -hmm. like i would kill for betty davis to be my nanny <laughs> um and strange things start happening dot 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 is it nanny is it him we don't know possibly evil nanny 
Possibly. This was during the period where Betty Davis was started to get all these horror kind of roles and psychological mm-hmm. thrillers and stuff after after the success of whatever happened to Baby Jane. Jane. And I think I, it's sometimes underappreciated this portion of her career. Yeah. I had forgotten about that movie. Thank you. Yeah, that's I love all those movies like um what what was that one? What's the matter with Helen? Mm-hmm. They had all those movies yeah. that were like question type. They're so good. It's like a whole genre of that period. Like I said, Betty Davis was just, could, could be very, she was very overpowering on the screen in a, in a good way. But when she, she put herself into a role and she was great as a, to me as a horror villain or, mm-hmm. you know, like Baby Jane, she was kind of, you know, the one, the victim there. But, uh, for most of the film but uh yeah anything with betty davis i'm up for <laughs> i love her yeah this movie is just very suspenseful it's a really fun mm-hmm. watch well keeping with uh kind of the psychological horror i'm going to go with my next one is 1948's rope Starring J- Jimmy Stewart, uh, Alfred, one of Alfred Hitchcock's best. It all takes place in an apartment where two college kids just want to see if they can get away with a murder. So they kill a classmate, hide his body in their apartment, and the rest of it is almost like uh, the telltale heart where wow. guilt and fear starting to overtake them. Jimmy Stewart is there investigating, and then I'll leave it at that. But it's one of Alfred Hitchcock's best. Very minimalistic. All takes place in an apartment. The murder weapon is a rope. Here the net na- hits the name, and a lot of homoeroticism too. Alfred Hitchcock was really good at that. <laughs> Which is funny because he was such a whore with the ladies. Yeah, he was. Well, he was. He was probably not the best human being, but I love Alfred Hitchcock. Same. I, I, I separate the art from the man when it comes to mm. him. But a lot of his movies had homosexual overtones, and this one does. In fact, both of the actors that were the lead roles both came out as gay, so I think he just plays up what's already there. Yeah. That was cute. Yeah, they were cute. (laughs) I haven't seen that one. Thank you. Oh, it's so good. Now I want to rewatch it. It's like the, the murder scene where they're actually committing the murder, it's not bloody or anything like that, but when the victim, there's this scream that the victim lets out right before he dies and it haunts me i saw that movie when i was like 14 for the first time and that scream still haunts me my turn yes okay the next one on my list is a 2014 australian film the baba duke i don't think it's that that one oh really i was gonna say i don't think it's that that obscure but you didn't know that no um, i don't know that one have you seen it mikey yeah so 2014 the baba duke this one's by jennifer kent uh don't know anything else she's done but i love this horror movie it actually reminds me a lot of a little bit of Hitchcock a little bit of of David Lynch Um, the way that the film is shot just using shadows and darkness and and the the way the camera angles it pans out the way they shoot it itself builds this tension and makes it really creepy there it's not gory there's not a lot of, of, of go- there are some gotcha moments, but there's not a lot of um, gore. It's just that it relies on this sort of unnerving building tension with the camera work and the, and the, and the music. And it's about this single mom who's raising her six-year-old son by herself. Her husband died in a car crash on the way for her to give birth to the hospital, at the hospital. And her son starts exhibiting all this weird behavior and he starts becomes obsessed with this imaginary this monster that he thinks is living in their house called the Babadook. 
and you don't really know if it's her son that's having this breakdown and and causing her to eventually maybe have a breakdown or if there really is a monster and i'm not going to tell you which it is but it gets more and more just sort of excruciating with the terror and the tension and uh really good payoff at the end so i'll, I'll be checking that one out don't watch it alone at night it's too scary i <laughs> When I watched this movie, my friend David, we were roommates at the time, so I'm watching it in the living room. He can't, so in the movie, there's a thing where he like bang the whatever whatever the monster is like bangs on the door three times and is like duck. So my friend like walks into the house, like hey, goes into his room, and then suddenly, like ten minutes later, I saw he didn't walk by because I'm in the living room at the window. Duck. No. I had a heart attack because he was in his room. This asshole crawled out his window <laughs> and all the way around the house just to scare me. And it worked. <laughs> it, it's oh. like a, I, I had a roommate when uh, we need to all hang out. You would love him. <laughs> when when Ring was real big, I had a roommate that decided it would be fun to uh anytime I fell asleep in the living room to make sure that the television was on snow when I woke up. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh man. I once told him that there's not a jury in the world that would convict me if I kill you. <laughs> uh, okay. Truth. I'm going to confess something. When, it, when it, we were kids, um, my, our mother gave us these dolls because she liked to collect the dolls. So then that became a gift oh. she would give us is these collectibles called Madame Alexander dolls. But we couldn't play with them, and we had to put them in a cabinet with a key, right? Oh hell and, no! And so I had a cabinet with a key in my room with these dolls that I would get one a year. And my sister had a cabinet with a key, and there was one of her dolls. It was a Shirley Temple doll, but this particular Shirley Temple doll just looked possessed. It had the crazy size and just this creepy smile. And she was scared of it, and she used to turn it so it was facing uh, away from the, the 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 so you couldn't see its face. She would turn it around, and so. I took the key and I, I used to periodically go in there and take the doll out and put it on her bed, holding the key. <laughs> we were, it was, I know it's awful. We were children. Awesome. <laughs> we were children, but yeah, yeah, pretty, Those pretty dolls scary. Are terrifying. <laughs> Tracy, have you seen Scream Five yet? Yes. That's the movie they're talking about, which she's like, mm -hmm. I still prefer the Babadook. <laughs> I'm a little upset about that movie. I mean, I, I liked it. I thought it was great, but they needlessly, spoiler alert, they needlessly killed off Dewey. There was no need for Dewey to die. He was smarter than that. Even my mother says that. My mother, who had just been introduced to Scream, she had watched the first four with me, and she goes, that was just needless. They did not need to kill that young man. <laughs> That's exactly how. My mom is still not over because we've watched screen movies are like part of our family. Mm -hmm. We've watched them as a kid. My mom is still so not over. I, I'm I'm afraid it's with the new ones that are coming out. They're probably going to kill off all the legacy characters. I know they it's probably not. coming. And if they what kill they off Sydney Prescott, Campbell, if they kill off Sydney Prescott or uh, or Gail Weathers, it's not going to be pretty. I can't. I can't even. First of all, the fact that they will not pay the woman who has been carrying their franchise on her back for almost 30 years, mm -hmm. the disrespect, I can't, I can't. There's yeah. rumors that she might still be in Scream 6, I hope, mm -hmm. but Me too. pay, pay Nev Campbell. Yeah, pay her, pay her. <laughs> By the way, I'm totally going to find somebody to road trip with me in August to a horror convention she's doing in Jersey. You're so funny. <laughs> is it HorrorCon? Is it in Jersey this year? I don't know if it's that. It's one of them. MonsterCon, maybe? Uh, I'm not sure what it's called. 